neither have you ever been in a situation to design Microsoft Intune? If so, this session is for you. I'm going to explain everything related to the Microsoft Intune design and this is going to be a real uh, a customer's data which we are going to design. Meaning I have gathered the information and how to gather. So it's going to be from a due diligence onwards. It's going to uh, cover everything. Let's say uh, it covers your discovery and your licensing and your settings how to collect and how to fill and how to put it into a document and then you design it so once you have every data or every possible data with you then you can actually create microsoft intune as a design so when you completed any of my course either maybe from udemy or maybe from youtube channel or somewhere uh, let's say you you land it but you don't know how to start the designing so this is more into the designing so you are going to be an architect who will be designing microsoft intune or the mdm solution so this there are you know a few things that you need to you know collect it so we're going to talk on that and uh, followed by we will be implementing those settings so the first step would be collecting the information once you fill that information we will be designing that's how it's gonna uh, completely design so let's see uh, i have already uh, shared a couple of times this excel sheet but uh, this time i have already added uh, some more uh, new settings uh, which are um, latestly added by microsoft intune so those settings has been added into the excel file again i'm going to share this as a free of cost definitely uh, all i'm expecting is an encouragement maybe from um, supporting by commenting or maybe you know liking or maybe sharing in the intune community that might help others also that's it that's where i'm going to share this uh, information and this entire excel file which i'm going to share with you in a couple of minutes will be in the description of this video link wherever you are going to watch it so let's see friends um uh, this is the file which talks about everything so as you know microsoft intune can work as a standalone as well as the uh, it can also work in the hybrid environment meaning your on-premises as well as your cloud environment with a combination of your SCCM also for the co-management but for this customer they do not have SCCM so the entire design I'm gonna focus on only cloud only of course they do have hybrid AD environment so we're gonna cover that part except the co-management so if somebody is interested in the designing the co-management uh, maybe this is not the case or maybe you just have to add one more uh, column here for the co-management but rest of the part it will be covered okay so uh, first thing first here this is a sheet for Microsoft planning and configuration spreadsheet we can call write down your date and the version number and your customer name so once you have uh, write down this information uh, you try to capture by setting up some of the meetings with the customers so let's say whoever the uh, party from their end who can you know support you in terms of collecting the information you might have to you know set up some couple of meetings with respect to the mac operating system or ios or ipad and android and windows uh, with respect to the uh, configurations or maybe autopilot or list of applications that you wanted to deploy with microsoft intune for different applications also on a environment uh, restriction so you might have to set a couple of meetings and then collect this information okay so that's a high level plan so that's a high level plan now let's see uh, the first meeting which how we are going to you know, collect or what kind of information let's say i've already uh, set it up at a meeting with my customer on windows devices and this is the uh, normal sheet which i'm following let's see the first thing windows security baseline so you might have you know thinking you know where is this information is coming up so within this excel sheet i have uh, created multiple work uh, worksheets within this sheet everything consists of couple of different settings so in this case windows security baselines which we have created so this setting is actually going to come up from windows uh, 
security point of view for the windows operating system to you know secure or the devices to you know secure basically that is coming from endpoint security security baselines so you have uh, four different settings the new one would be the definitely the office 365 sorry microsoft 365 security baseline which is in a preview but from a uh, couple of months uh, or a couple of years we do have this setting called security baseline for windows 10 so this is a setting that talks about end-to-end -end security recommendations you take any CISO so if you're first time listening CISO he's the chief security officer who recommends all kind of you know, security uh, recommendations for your operating systems or your applications or your network specific so that fellow recommended settings will be Microsoft giving to you it means you have the full uh, capabilities that what Microsoft is using as a date and if you see here uh, every uh, every time it's going to change actually this number since this recording is from 2021 December uh, you have here November 2021 but uh, this number may change the reason being uh, the reason being very simple that you know every time the new security vulnerability comes up Microsoft keep on adding the best practices for you so that's what it's going to happen so I'll just give here some name like you know uh, uh, security baseline uh, example just wanted to show you some settings so let's say click on next so now you have a lot of settings here which are coming up here so with respect to the features for example uh, RPC RPC specific what kind of you know authentication only will be allowed for example uh, RPC unauthenticated client options will be authenticated or uh, remote management do you really want to you know allow the remote management such kind of you know security baseline security features will be completely added so these things I've actually put it here okay and the same things I've uh, created here two different things one would be the uh, company owned devices this is for company owned and this is for bring your own device yes on windows devices also you have sometimes the user may be coming from his personally owned device from home to access the corporate device during that time that device also must have to follow or get the security baseline settings to be applied so that's where we are enforcing right so these are the two uh, settings that are covered which is here right and similarly we also have the microsoft defender which uh, respected so if i just you know go up here uh, to the defender endpoint so we have a defender endpoint settings edge specific all of this stuff i've actually added here and also if you notice the good part would be the differentiation between company owned and uh, bring your own devices that's a personally owned devices that's how i've done it so why i'm doing all of this stuff is to uh, Collect it from the end user point of view or from your uh, client side. So What kind of information I've collected so far? So if you look at here, I have uh, done already a couple of meetings with my customer and In this case for the company owned devices with respected baselines So these are the settings that we as agreed with the customer. Let's see uh, if you look at here uh, The audit specific uh, let's take one simple example audit specific the events that are going to generate for example the user logs in logs off all of that success failure information gets recorded here so that kind of information or bit locker is configured so such, such things are hard coded here which are close to you know 200 plus or 300 plus settings that are added here right so all these are a recommended setting so let's see these are recommended that we wanted to configure as per uh, for the customer so if you ask me hey is all these questions or answered by your customer no so we recommended them saying that hey these are the recommended best security recommendations based on our implementation as an Intune architect for a couple of customers we f we felt that you know these are the recommended settings and uh, whether you don't want these settings let us uh, tell us so that we would be happy to take out these settings and modify according to your environment because not everything is applicable for your customer also right sometimes they need some kind of exceptions or sometimes that might not be applicable because of their business domain or the nature of their business what they do so 
here we are gonna configure these settings so in a minute uh, not exactly a minute maybe after maybe 30 40 minutes or so when we go for the actual implementation we would be configuring each and every setting as it is since it is agreed by the customer same thing uh, for here bring your own device concept so here also a couple of settings but if you look at it, it's just the 141 settings compared with the 300 and, uh, plus uh, odd settings, right? So we taken out few of the settings. So because it's a bring your own device, definitely we don't want to completely lock the device uh, which is coming from a company owned when compared with uh, bring your own device concepts. And uh, defender endpoint. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the link was broken up but i have re-added the link so i'll just re-click on this this would take to the defender settings so uh, since the customer wanted defender settings to apply for only corporate devices uh, we are enabling these but not for the bring your own device because this specific customer he said he don't want so we can't do anything uh, for the bring your own device concept uh, with respect to these policies so from where to die get all these settings is these settings are actually coming from again from here defender endpoint uh, baseline so same thing um, if you just create these all the settings will come up think about the efforts that we put it to create all these settings and their values as it is to populate within this excel so you're going to use it for free or you know easy way as a ready-made but uh, i would also request you if you can you know collaborate to add more value and you can you know simply upload somewhere to get more information so that you know the entire community can be utilized this excel file now edge specific settings so these are the edge specific settings uh, that are available and and these edge specific settings are for corporate as well as the bring your own device uh, concept so wherever it is it's the same thing and now once we have identified these settings now uh, these are the security point of view what we want to cover now let's also talk about how do you measure your compliance let's see if a device is trying to enroll it also must to have like a firewall or antivirus or certain uh, bit locker encryption kind of drive encryption all of that settings right so how do you enforce that or how do you know validate whether these are uh, the devices which are coming up and following your baseline security so for that you have an option here complaints policy settings so i've actually uh, created here very limited settings and if you could you know uh, look at here these are very small uh, settings that are coming up like you know let me take it left side so bitlocker encryption all of that so for the bring your own device devices we are not enforcing to have the bitlocker all of that you know uh, things but definitely for the corporate devices right but we are configuring here a certain kind of you know passwords and simple words password to be you know blocked and firewall antivirus to be you know enabled like you know these are the agreements that we met with the customer of course you know with your customer it might be different and he they might be you know enforcing something else here instead of 1909 they might be you know just wanted the latest or maybe older version of windows 10 build right and coming back to the cvd yes they need you know here um, a bit locker encryption is needed for complaints point of view and also a couple of other settings if you see more settings we configured for uh, company owned devices for complaints policies to measure right and uh, these are the things which are going to design in a minute now once we design the complaints policies now let's talk about the uh, here the patch management so for the patch management also the two things one would be the company owned devices other one would be the bring your own devices for definitely for the bring your own devices we just wanted to patch it we don't want to you know uh, allow them to upgrade or enforce them to you know upgrade to one build to another build but if we just want it uh, it to be patched or it, it should you know stay with the latest updates that's what we want to do it as part of the enrollment but for company owned devices um, it's it's a different actually company owned devices we wanted uh, to ensure that 
uh, along with the patching we also want to update the feature feature releases for example here windows 10 to windows 11 we want to upgrade or we want to you know upgrade to the latest build for example 21h2 is the latest one which you want to know stay so such things as well as the faster uh, quality update deployment features so these things we need to you know uh, collect the informations from your customer so in my case i've collected that we wanted to you know follow all of these things for the company owned devices but not for uh, bring your own devices uh, and also list of applications that we wanted to deploy let's see they wanted the office 365 applications along with that some kind of you know application they wanted as a sign and some of them as mandatory very simple applications what they asked since it's a very small customer and if any additional settings you want to you know configure you can feel free to you know configure now i request if somebody has done any of the additional settings or configuring or you want to you know add another excel sheet from here and then name it as a something like this maybe you know admin template and add all the features that are available what i'm trying to explain here is if you just go to the devices and try to go to the compliances or maybe let's take windows by platform and uh, here configuration profiles and here select windows channel later and templates here administrative templates so if i just click on this since i don't have uh, much options or much time to you know explain all of this so if you look at here you can create or you can you know export simply uh, here all this data to your excel in a right way and configure these settings these are the options that you have uh, so that it will be written here right so that it can be you know, helpful for others but in my case my customer does not ask any of these settings uh, in the phase one so we do have the phase wise deployments so they might come up a later point uh, with any of these settings so let's see this is for the admin so they might come up with another uh, configuration later point under templates maybe custom or a devo that's a delivery optimization specific something like these kind of you know things they might come up right for addition upgrade something like that then you need to have these settings also to be captured from your customer and include in your excel and definitely you have to implement those settings as part the as part of your deployment so i covered for windows similarly for these things for compliance policies for android devices so in this case this customer is needed only bring your own device not for the corporate so i didn't capture anything and their automated configuration these are the settings that want they wanted like copy paste to be blocked additional password protection for their applications corporate application such information they asked so we're going to configure that along with the device configuration for example the password policy all of that and list of application remains the same and also the app protection policy so when we talk about the app protection policies that they wanted to protect their corporate application data not to copy paste to personal applications that's what they wanted to do it so we do have uh, that configuration policy we just captured for example all the all kind of applications it's very wider right when i say all uh, corporate application might be 10 15 20 30 we never know right so all of that application data should not go to personal profile that's a policy scope and then we are trying you know here they can you know store the information in one drive or sharepoint but not to locally on the device and also the copying the data anything from organization data from organization specific applications to or work profile application to personal applications for example gmail or notepad it's not going to allow so we're going to block it so such kind of a you know, policy like a copy paste all of that stuff will be you know uh, blocked along with additional access requirement we are setting for example to open that outlook application or maybe a teams application you need additional pin or additional access uh, information that needs to be configured so that once you enter the password 
uh, only will be application will be open such configuration we are actually pulling from the customer point of view so these informations we captured for Android so coming back to the Chromebooks it's not supported so in case if you are trying to implement Chromebooks is not supported so same way we are capturing for iOS also my friends similar thing for Mac I'm pretty sure that I've taken your 20 minutes time to you know explain this uh, entire Excel sheet how we are going to set it up a meeting and get the uh, data to be collected for your planning in tune uh, configuration right now once this is done okay once this is done it's time for us to implement right so uh, I'm gonna actually uh, implement all of this stuff just for you in a lab environment even though this is for customer and a customer requirement a real customer environment I just wanted to you know implement and show you so that you could do it on your own also how we're gonna do it so I will be let's go to the Microsoft Intune portal or endpoint manager admin center so this is the contest or test domain it's a completely a new uh, tenant which we have not done anything here so it just for this project I have created and also got the licenses for us okay and uh, let me also show you the portal.azure.com configuration for you quickly let's open up the active directory and if you could see here it's just the uh, test domain and uh, it's not really mapped to any of the domain so contestor uh, condition9848.onmicrosoft.com that's what I created here as a tenant but it's not really mapped to any of the real domain so that you can find out from custom domains so you see here so as a first step I would uh, like to do it as it is uh, to map to the domain so in this uh, this step is not mandatory but I like to do it because that way I get the real feeling that we are actually working on a real domain so I'll be quickly doing this it might be in a fast forward it for you and uh, since I have my own domain I'm gonna map it to there quickly so click on add add the custom dom that you, the uh, domain name that you own and simply add later point simply add these records in your GoDaddy or wherever you bought the domain I logged into the, my uh, GoDaddy in this case I need to you know, create some txt record if you could remember the values or these are the values so I'm going to create the same values here and click on save and wait for 5 to 10 minutes and then simply uh, once DNS is propagated properly you could click on verify button just click on verify if the record is already available the specific record on a public DNS service it would be validated like this and then make it as a primary so that the user accounts that you're going to create will consist of at the rate your domain name so in my case learn in my laptop.com so that's gonna uh, that will be my primary so if you look at here it has taken already primary so if we, any user account that's we are going to create will be with that custom name for example here a Chris account is already there so I could make this Chris account you know login uh, here with learninmylab.com which is a domain we just verified in this case similarly whatever the accounts you want to create uh, it can consist of for example if I try to create here Rob account so you could actually create either Contoso or the tenant name or based on the domain name in this case it's the domain name of course you know all these things will be already available for you uh, or by default already it might be you know already set it for you when I say you know, by default actually your AD guys have already done this for you so you don't need to worry on this part so you can simply skip the last five ten minutes um, part which we just try to you know set it up here the domain verification part apart from this let's jump into the quick configuration part so this is my uh, the first thing I'm gonna configure today uh, with my first settings for the windows I'm gonna work so I'm focusing on windows with the windows security baseline for November 2021 CVD settings so that's a company owned device so a couple of settings here if you look at here more than 300 and plus settings which we talked about 330 uh, plus settings which we are gonna create so definitely to create you need to go to the endpoint security and 
under security based lines we will be creating a policy so we're pretty sure we we'll simply click on the security baseline for windows 10 so we would uh, give here the name a proper name to be given right so definitely the name which i'm going to give it here is security baseline for windows 10 profile just copy paste it here cod so this is for uh, cod devices uh, not for the bring your own devices and this is the settings for november 2021 hey friends in case if you're looking for uh, the documentation for with respect to this uh, you can actually find out for example if i just click it here so you would have your three different uh, sheets also give me a second this is not the one maybe let's take the here uh, security settings yeah no not available let me open up in the excel sheet in fact i did mention here so if you just go back to the top you have here the link so this is the link which talks about the complete settings information let's say you want to talk with your customer confidently on what it does this specific setting let's say uh, in this document or in this excel sheet we talked about voice activate apps from locked screen meaning uh, if you just read this entire story it was you know given here basically but what it does is let's say you locked your computer and you want to know activate the commands over the voice based uh, to perform some kind of activities we are actually disabling because that's a security risk you're not in front of your computer and uh, somebody can you know activate or somebody can perform some kind of an actions uh, with the Cortana or maybe kind of in you know, a Google um, okay Google or maybe kind of in you know, things right so definitely you could you know um, AI based things can be you know, blocked so that's a configuration what it does so that information will be available here definitely and if not you know you simply have to set here uh, within that respected setting and then click on here and you get that information uh, with respect to you know that specific configuration and you could uh, get it more information about what it can consist and you could you know explain to the customer so that's the idea okay and uh, now i'm just creating the base thing so i'll just say uh, click next and assignment i'm not going to assign to anybody at this point of time it's a base policy which we are trying to create of course the description also should consist properly and you might have to create here uh, to differentiate the group because these entire settings what we are trying to create uh, is for cod company want so you would be creating a dynamic ad group for corporate owned devices how do i identify so you could identify based on the device ownership so the device ownership will consist whether it's a personal device or corporate device so Based on that, you know, the settings will apply. So um, I'm not sure, you know, if I have any device here because it's a, play, a pretty new one. But you no, know, any device properties, you get this information, and you could actually do that uh, uh, based on the AD group, a dynamic membership. You could create it. Let's say if I want to create a new group, you could simply choose your dynamic and then dynamic query. Uh, within this query you can choose here device uh, owner okay so here device ownership consists can contain personally owned or maybe a corporate you could you know uh, give here so that becomes as a query and that ad group can be assigned here within this policy so in my case it's a blank policy which i'm going to create and will be adjusted according to these settings so when I see these settings, these are the settings that we have created. So we needed to match every possible setting. So uh, that's the next job. So I'll just click on this. I'll go to the edit. This is where I'm going to configure the settings, configuration settings. So above lock settings, and this is a category within this. Uh, you have a voice specific which should be in a disabled state which is there block display of the toast notifications yes uh, run any app application specific so the first one is perfect 
and this one is enable state this is a Microsoft specific enabled and uh, application management specific we're not going to configure anything here so not configure not configure not configure okay so we're not configuring anything here and audit specific we are not touched these all are recommended so we are not touching up anything here okay but autoplay uh, autoplay we need to look into it autoplay so autoplay we have three different settings so where the settings do not execute disable and enable these three things so as it is okay coming back to the bit locker the yes and configure and yes that's there coming back to the browser specific settings yeah here the password manager that's a blocking the passwords yes uh, since it's a corporate device we are blocking but not on a personal devices won't do that maybe uh, prevent users overriding certificate errors all of that we are actually configuring yes and connectivity so that's a default setting which we are not touching up as far as i know connectivity yes this should be to enable configure unc all of that and credential delegation enabled credential ui disabled and data protection block direct memory access enabled so like that we would you know check every possible settings my friend so i'm pretty sure that you know it's going to take a lot of time um i don't want to waste your time but i just shown maybe last 10 15 minutes with respect to this so let me pass here and come back by checking all of these settings and then i'll come back to you so finally i have done the same configuration which uh, is in my in, uh, excel sheet so all of that stuff is already configured now so I'll simply review and save it and uh, now it has to be assigned to there's no profile changes because I saved it already and now it's time for us to change this settings to apply to a specific group so which will be created now so I would be creating Windows 10 CVD devices group click on groups and then create a new group uh, called all corporate devices so I'll be just creating a security group called corporate devices with a membership in this I'm gonna make it as a dynamic and dynamic query so device ownership just go down so operator is I'll just say matching or contains or equals I think equals is the right so just use the corporate I click here within this box this actually builds this query and click on save that's gonna save the dynamic query and then simply create so this is going to create a new dynamic group for corporate devices this is how you're going to create the uh, a group uh, in case if it is a personally owned devices you simply have to replace with the corporate with a personal word that would automatically take care so let's say if i have a device maybe if i just take it from my corporate let me show you here um, how it looks like maybe so if you look at here this is how it looks like the corporate the ownership uh, i just have taken a screenshot from somewhere from other environment just to you know, show you so i hope this explains you know what value to be you know, taken here the ownership value we are making as a personal or corporate simple so once we have done this the group membership is done now let's go to the endpoint security and select the security baseline and simply security baseline for windows 10 which we just created here and we will be assigning that policy so as soon as the devices comes from the assignment uh, it will be added to that group corporate devices click on save that's it uh, this is going to happen uh, with only corporate devices 
Great. So we create a one uh, settings. How about other settings that we want to do it? In this case, we have just completed the security baselines for CWD. We also have to do it for BWD. So we'll be doing for BWD similar settings, similar way, but this is just the 100 and uh, close to uh, 150 uh, settings that are available when compared with the 350 plus with the corporate. So we'll be creating that. So let's go to again security. Security baseline for Windows and this time create the name and description affiliate and choose the settings. So as usual, I'm going to take everything now and later point I'll be editing because I'm not assigning to anybody here. If you see, so I've not assigned. So once it is created, personally owned one, I'll simply edit here by going to the properties and from the configuration we would look at all these settings based on the category and we'll be doing it so give me a second i'll be uh, configuring and I'll come back to you so it took a lot of time to you know update a lot of other settings because uh, most of the settings were not applicable or not recommended for uh, windows devices which are bring your own device because uh, who we are to you know block or to configure on those devices like a bit locker or other security guidelines which we don't want to do it definitely for example Wi-Fi specific if you look at to block automatically connect maybe user might be connecting it or for their hot hotspot or maybe internet sharing is allowed such things so we just disable a lot of in you know, other settings you could actually refer this bring your own device specific settings okay so these are the settings that are we felt that you know are recommended or should have on those uh, machines once we have these you can click on save in fact uh, i've not done any changes but because i've already configured and saved it i'm just trying to show you so you might see here no settings were changed because i've already done the changes well once we have this you could actually create very similar to the group that we created earlier very similar to the group uh, group like new group so we can give a good uh, meaningful description uh, for the group and group description and then simply go to the dynamic device and simply click on device query device ownership is equals to in this case personal so how do I identify in case if I have already enrolled the devices um, you would you know get it here as a personal or corporate so in this case we are trying to create for personal so I've just written here personal and click on this box that will create the syntax for us and click on save click on create that's gonna create a group name so in this case all BYD group has been created so I would uh, like to assign the security policies that we created now so here two policies we have now so we have to target for bring your own devices properties assignments add group all BYD devices save that's it it's done so from the last 40 minutes I have almost created and explained with you the two security baselines now the same way I have to do it for um, endpoint baseline for Defender and H so let me do it for you on that and I'll come back to you so to do this uh, as simple as that you know edge specific browser or the Defender specific uh, this is going to apply for only company owned devices so you see here this is where the policy is there so simply click on here and create profile so I'll be creating Microsoft Defender for endpoint only COD and uh, you can check out your Excel file with these settings so most of the settings these are default settings that that's what I've shown so I'm pretty sure that you know all of these settings are default so it's simply choose all of this for example if you look at the BitLocker this would be somewhere here in a bold color so I've taken all of these values built in so simply click on next because we configured now I can add the group 
so this is for corporate devices so simply click on corporate devices click on next that said it's going to create for endpoint security and now we have finished one of the configuration here and now it's time for us to create for edge so these are the common settings that are needed for edge specific for corporate devices as well as the bring your own devices so meaning for every device so simple go to the again endpoint security security baselines and this time edge click a new profile and create the profile specific configuration so in this case microsoft edge baseline all devices so these are the recommended settings which we are going to enable the group so in my case i want to apply for corporate and bring your own device so all devices which will include so this is a default group so i'll be assigning this what if, if I assign for all users this also gets applied for all users who are trying to use this uh, who are trying to use the specific settings or maybe edge the browser so if I just click uh, quickly refresh this assign will get changed to yes earlier it was no state so we have done very much uh, within 40 minutes now complaints policy based so the next thing should be to configure your complaints policies for your bring your own devices and corporate devices so how do we configure these policies so it's so easy uh, that if you just click on a complaints policy for bring your own device so this is what the requirement what we are going to configure so let's do that from devices and by platform maybe windows in this case so this is where the compliance policies which we are going to measure right this is the basically for windows devices we're going to check the compliance whether these things are meeting your requirement or not so select here for windows general data including windows 10 and 11 and now here i should say that this is for policy for byod and then click on next now this is where uh, you have options for example custom complaints policy meaning let's say you have some script that has to be run on the machine and gather or maybe you know some settings and then it should in you know, a report back let's say some register keys should be there or some software should be installed and it should be configured in such a way then you're going to use that common script but in our case we do not have so that's that's what here and uh, this required basically a script as well as the json file to validate right now other part would be the device health which requires a bit locker or securing the bit locker with the uh, sorry securing the secure boot uh, which is additional option for securing your boot integrity and all of that stuff uh, also you have the device property so in our case so what we have here here is uh let's see left side what is config complaints custom complaints is not configured not configured this is a minimum operating system version is 1909 that's what we are referring if you just look at uh, from your wikipedia you have two options one is a preview builds other one is the older version so in my case i would actually choose public patches of windows 10 anything is actually starting from 1863 so what we can do is we could actually configure this anywhere the specific build version as the value here right so i would uh, enter under complaints the minimum os version is this and uh, next one is a validate operating system builds so if you validate 1809 to 1909 or something like that you can validate you can give the bill number in our case we don't have and now we don't have a ccm so i'm not going to configure just look at your requirements that you gather from your customer so in our case um, configuration manager is nothing for password and security yeah it requires password to unlock the configuration yeah it is required and uh, simple password it's going to block and with respect to 
minimum password length is four characters which is already there that's it and uh, the last two for the device security we are configuring we're not measuring any kind of you know, encryption or anything so here we would simply go to security device security where's the device security this is where device security uh, with it this firewall is required to be open and antivirus is definitely needed so it can be a defender or whatever it is but it needs so these are the things we configured and as you know this let's say uh, if this settings are not available you need to actually send it to an email by creating a template to the end user okay and you have the template so i have actually explained all of this stuff uh, within this intune training series number 11 how to configure your non-compliance so if you just go to uh, maybe somewhere here for sending configuration you could see here how to configure these templates all of that stuff we did actually explained uh, this step so you could you know if you want you know you can always refer to my uh, channel with the specific webcast okay let's jump into this part so in my case i'm actually not configuring here uh, because i need to you know get the email license also which i have not done for this case so i'll simply remove this and click on next but we are actually marking the device to non-compliant meaning if any of these settings are not available that we configure then automatically the device becomes as a non-compliant in the all devices and we're going to apply this definitely for cod or the bring bring your own device specific configuration so we are currently doing this for bring your own device if you see the excel sheet so we would definitely like to configure for all bring your own devices you could even limit this but specific to only windows devices also but either way uh, this is going to be only the uh, bring your own device concept so if a user comes from windows then it gets applied the specific setting now we also going to do the similar policy for corporate owned devices meaning uh, uh, meaning here in this case if the device is joined to azure ad then uh, we might you know, think about it's a company owned devices or the devices that are properly enrolled within the intune then we can treat that as the company owned devices there is another step which we are going to learn within this design how how do you differentiate between corporate and bring your own device concept we are going to uh, have a look on that part but let's actually look at the specific to cod company one devices so here custom configuration we are not doing but we need the devices if it is a corporate device we're expecting the device must be a uh, must have the bit locker so we are configuring in that so i'll just go here bit locker is required so on a corporate devices and also here 1909 specific we, we needed that which is the operating system build minimum voice version and then also here what else here required password required so these are the common things which we configured so let's configure in this case it requires a password to unlock device properties we configured and now configuration manager that's a system client we don't have let's say if you have then you can configure but in our case we don't have a system client so it's a required as uh, sorry the client machine should have a password uh, and that password is definitely needed to log into the machine that's what this configuration represents and block the simple password and the password type we are going to talk about here password type is device default minimum password length is four characters and the password expiry for 41 a number of previous passwords to prevent to reuse this is going to be a file that's what we thought to configure and let's see required password when dry device returns from ideal state so definitely uh, this specific setting i think you know uh, we didn't configure yeah we said you know not to configure 
and what else encryption not config uh, this is configured encryption is required and also device security firewall is required tpm is required and virus is required so i'm going to configure these three things followed by microsoft defender anti malware yes and uh, also our real time protection should be enabled and it's required actually so that's what we are going to configure uh, and coming back to the endpoint uh, configurations here uh, we're at least saying that it should be no low that's what we thought risk level so these are the configuration that we want to apply so if you remember we in in the past we created for bring your own devices now the policy we are trying to create is for definitely for the COD so we need to apply for the COD but before that it actually giving the uh, the email configuration all of that settings so in case if any device is found that it's not gonna work or not have that specific configuration we are gonna get uh, automated emails so for that uh, we can configure as I said earlier you could go to my previous video where I have shown how to configure that these templates to reuse so you could use them to configure now I'm gonna apply to a group call definitely this is COD company owned devices so I'll simply apply for company owned devices so in this case corporate devices that's it uh, now we have a two policies would create another way so if I just go to your project dashboard we completed these things now it's time for us to configure for patching and list of applications that concludes the windows that's it that's that's how you're going to design for windows complete in tune uh, again this is just the some of the settings definitely this is what my customer has but it's going to cover trust me 90 percent of the things okay you can feel free to comment you know if i or maybe your customer is looking for something else please you know comment it so that you know we'll try to cover up uh, that things may be in another video uh, definitely it's not the end it's just the beginning right so let's configure for the patching so for the patching uh, as I said you know we are gonna have three different things so just to explain here three different settings one would be the just the uh, patching how to start the patch and when to uh, patch your machine and what is your end user experience other one is let's say you are running with a windows old build and you want to you know uh, put it into a specific build state so that's what uh, the feature pack update or feature update which is gonna upgrade your windows builds to the next version and the other one is uh, the patching you want to enforce them in a quicker way so that you you or your IT team can do the um, UAT uh, that would uh, help the uh, help to understand about the patching because we are not gonna select any patches right Intune doesn't provide you an option to select the patch so uh, you never know what it could cause a problem so the best way is to you know use the quality updates for Windows 10 or later on a quickly basis and target them a later point a uh, later point you could uh, you could actually get the results and then by the time this patching so this is update rings would you know kick off so let me show you these things from the console point of view so you just go to the devices and by platform windows now you have three things so one is the update rings and other one is a feature update and quality update so we did talk about these three within this excel sheet and we covered these things within this excel sheet for your design gathering so you might have to request them for these information so in this case the first thing uh, update rings which we are going to create so this is for update rings for windows 10 or later definitely so i'm going to create the same name and uh, these settings i have already standardized uh, here if you could uh, look at microsoft updates are uh, allow okay and quality how windows drivers are allowed and the quality of this deferral period the number of days is 30 i'm sorry i'm working as a blind the reason being the entire information was gathered already for me i mean i have done that so i should you know use these values right definitely 30 days here so feature update 30 and upgrade to windows 10 devices to uh, 11 i'm not going to 
upgrade them because I want to stay since it is a just started Windows 11 for me and also uh, this has been done right now and set a feature update and installation period anywhere from 2 to 60 so we are configuring here the value for 60 which is a maximum days so that this specific information will stay on the client machine and uh, uh, any of the end user can uninstall if really needed uh, what if if you configure two lists you don't have an option to uninstall right so that's why uh, we gave the maximum days so coming back to the servicing channel uh, so this is the pre-built we are not configuring automatic behavior this is basically uh, how you're gonna apply it so this specific value which is I configured servicing channel will come up later point for you but for now if you look at uh, automatic update uh, installation behavior auto install and restart if it is scheduled then so I'm gonna install auto install and restart at a specific the schedule time okay so this is going to be on a, a schedule time every week Friday 5 p.m. so every week or not all day it's going to be Friday 5 p.m. not the a.m. and then uh, hello restart checks meaning whether you wanna check the restart specific yes uh, battery percentage all of that values will be calculated and uh, enable enable which is options to pause and check for new updates users also can do that on their own check notification updates uh, this is use the default windows update notification use the default windows update notification use deadline settings so here the use the deadline settings for hello so now we are going to configure the deadline settings so in this case 30 deadline for any feature pack is 30 deadline for any quality updates also 30 grace period is 7 so anyway 30 30 so here 7 so the first friday it's going to hit hit up so that's nothing but your second friday which is coming up it will try to install if not it will try to enforce after 30 days um, or it, it's gonna put it as a, a deadline or in the next Friday it's gonna uh, kick off because we are configured for every week for Friday so it's not just the second Friday third or fourth or sometimes me fifth Friday also we never know but that's how it's gonna happen and this is gonna apply for COD company owned devices right so this setting so I'll just configure the group name called company owned devices okay and that's it it's targeted now another setting which we are going to do is the feature updates so let's say you might be running with the older builds 1909 or maybe 1809 or whatever the build 21 h1 so you want to you know stay to your latest build then you're going to use this option so in my case um, feature update deployment i wanted to set it to a specific value here in this case feature update so i wanted to set it to 21 h2 I wanted to see uh, the reason being uh, we don't want to upgrade to Windows 11 this is a current build and we wanted all the builds should run with this build, which is uh, 21 h2 so that's what we are trying out and the roll up option or the rolling that's the installation update available as soon as possible not on a specific date and time so as soon as possible uh, so that users can give it a try so corporate devices again I'm targeting and create so that's it this is gonna done uh, feature pack and the quality updates again to test this you need to have the uh, a specific uh, configuration in this case the uh, pilot users group so let's create that a uh, pilot quality update uh, for Windows 10 pilot group so I have to create a group called as uh, AD group uh, it, it's going to be a signed group so it's not a dynamic okay for patching 
so so you could assign the selected devices so the users devices would automatically install the patches as soon as possible let's say if i just click on windows and quality updates which is currently in a preview state so you see here quality updates for patching so ex ex it's going to expedite the complete installation um, so if you look at your uh, date which is coming up 12th uh, calendar that's a december so it's gonna configure as soon as possible basis so the number of days before it's gonna wait is one day that's it so after that it's gonna make it as a mandatory and it will install so that you could um, uh, you could test the patch whether it is working fine or not so in my case uh, since i've created this group so i'll just selected that create that that has been created this right so now within this the three settings that we talked about these three uh, are cover for cvd devices now let's look at servicing channel which was showing as a retail uh, this one we thought to you know review it so let's review this property and if you see here it's coming automatic retail channel okay and that's a be default behavior uh, from the intune so I captured that specific setting good guys let's move to um, definitely for bring your own devices so let's say if there is a device is coming to our, uh, our to our network and we wanted to onboard the users to access some kind of you know access then we would like to configure here patching for windows updates and windows uh, build for with respect to only bring your own devices so in this case i will be creating another profile for updates ring this is patching for this time byo only so that's it uh, that would uh, create the default settings if you remember we created here deferral periods we gave here the settings which is 30 30 so 30 30 no this is 60 periods is the great uh, grace period that we given at a scheduled time every week on friday so we configure every week on any day no friday between somewhere here 5 pm that's it remaining settings are uh, same here if you uh, here if you look at here use windows hello this is 30 30 grace period 7 reboot deadline is yes and configuration to all bring your own devices that's it and uh, if you look at just a review well, because i did you know very quickly done this configuration you could see uh, here after rebooting the reboot deadline is no is configured i'm sorry so i configured as yes in this case so i'm just changing to no but it's going to reboot definitely after some time the user have to reboot it because it's a, a user's machine bring your own device so let's see uh, for cvd what is the status i'll just rename this to proper and uh, yeah it's going to reboot for corporate devices but bring your own devices we are not enforcing to reboot but we are ensuring patching should happen so that's a major difference that's what we thought uh, now so we have configured all these things now list of applications and if any custom settings we don't have any further custom settings as i requested if somebody can you know uh, share somewhere all these options that are available from intune in excel sheet it would be great collaboration for me or for others who can you know readily use just like me uh, you know who, who is sharing with you the knowledge right and let's also look at the list of applications the list of applications are very interesting they I didn't ask much at this point of time so here uh, we know the applications which is Microsoft 365 applications teams and outlook so these applications we need to you know uh, on board for that you just have to go to applications and uh, from the applications we're in apps for windows 
here uh, also they ask uh, to make some applications as a mandatory also so we would ensure that uh, we will make those applications also so line of business applications we are not going to use here because it needs those uh, additional configuration and it's definitely from microsoft uh, windows 10 with respect to the uh, office 365 specific application which we wanted so we are gonna choose here almost everything is there here i'll select here the configuration i'm gonna configure so what they wanted is they don't want uh they they don't want as a mandatory they want it as the optional okay so i'll just say uh i'll make this as optional okay so here monthly enterprise or the channel which we are ensuring for the app step ops application suitability or stability purpose we would you know go with the semi-annual enterprise channel uh, sac uh, that uh, is gives the more stability and the remaining things are fine shared computer activation also if you want to activate you can do that uh, normally the users can only uh, install and activate office 365 app on a limited devices uh, maximum five if you have such devices we are going to do it but in our case no and install background no or the bing languages if you have a multiple languages you can always configure so in our case it's a default um, so we're not going to use any additional language in this case okay and you have your list of applications that you want to you know, deploy so in our case i'm making everything as the optional for you for the end users okay this is for not required case this is going to be available for all the enrolled devices so i'm gonna uh, make this for everyone and that's it uh, this is gonna become as available state uh, which includes your office entire product suit but the requirement also they have in a different way uh, one would be the they said they wanted office 365 only but some applications to be a mandatory for example uh, they said outlook uh, and also here if you look at here uh, outlook and teams are mandatory so let's you no know, put it in a different color that makes maybe a little differentiate so if you see here they wanted teams and outlook to be mandatory so in my case uh, teams and outlook deployment i'm sorry this is going to be a real design so really i will be using all this configuration in a production for a simple customer who is using so I need to you know, make it a proper way so in the design we will take it out everything and we'll keep it only outlook and teams as mandatory applications and the licensing if you have any additional license for example with you and project you want to capture you can but in our case we don't have anything but the architecture is 64 bit this channel is as i said you know enterprise uh, channel so that there is no frequent updates remove other versions yes A version to install is latest i'm not going to activate i'm not going to activate the multiple uh, user accounts uh, or in a shared device so i'll just use these in the language i'm going to definitely choose the required languages otherwise it's going to default language so uh, that's what it's going to happen so i'll just select these and this time i'm going to make it to all devices all users this becomes as a mandatory so as soon as you uh, onboard any of the device the outlook and teams gets installed it's a mandatory that's it that's how uh, you can you know design the application point of view in case if you want to deploy microsoft uh, uh 
engine portal application or the company portal application for Windows devices make sure that you actually configure your company uh, specific once again let me show you here the store for business application or Microsoft store uh, for business should be you no know, configured so once you sign up here with the store uh, you could actually configure or you could import the applications from Microsoft store and that applications will be deployed and just to remember that you could even buy the applications uh, directly from Microsoft store for business so let's say uh, here uh, I just you know since I have already signed in with this location with this email ID it is just uh, collected so I can search here uh, company portal application so this is the application that we wanted to deploy so as simple as that we would first get this app so that uh, it has been purchased since it's a free in license it's just added otherwise uh, it's gonna ask for the credit card payment all of that stuff and you're gonna managing from your billing so store design also you should consider in case if they are coming up with office 365 subscription from directly from store for business or maybe somewhere some applications that you uh, purchase like Adobe specific applications or some other applications you could always search here within this store and you could get that applications okay so these are the things for example I just clicked on uh, these are the applications or which are available for free but some of them are costly also forget about the cost it's just a paid things right so now we have integration has been done so I'll just say enable okay so I'll just say click on enable and we signed up this okay and uh, this is going to retire in 2023 that's fine manage apps that we purchased so in this case we purchased one application which should be available here also if you just go to your settings uh, under manage just you know a little bit here under manage and settings show a shopping experience should be you know set it to offline experience to on state so that the offline licensed applications will be shown for us that's it and uh, if the sync is successful you also get here the application that are actually synced up okay so it's taking some time so I'll just move on for that um, so later point you know we have to deploy these two things as a mandatory and uh, now Microsoft 365 we made it as available and two of them as mandatory teams in uh, Outlook and now that concludes the entire section for Windows now let's do one thing my friends uh, enough uh, for here the entire uh, things of course we also have your autopilot specific configuration I think you know yeah let's configure this also autopilot uh, specific and also restrictions all of that stuff so let's click on autopilot here uh, so uh, these guys ha just wanted the user driven there's no pre-provisioning and self deployment methods so we would go by user driven for that we need to customize the uh, end user experience with the logos and all of other stuff so let me open portal.azure.com or aad.portal.azure.com uh, that would take it to the active directory so in my case I would go to azure active directory and uh, within this we need to configure our branding company branding so for the autopilot one of the requirement is to configure the specific settings especially the banner logo the screen logo should be configured many one things these are the you know uh, screen logo is mandatory to you know have it so you know our case uh, we have already a specific set of um, configurations uh, in this case logo this is a screen logo and uh, on the image also I have already these things and the uh, banner logo is not mandatory even the background also not mandatory so 
uh, I don't need to configure but in case uh, since I have it I'll just use the background and banner logo these two are not mandatory but these create things are mandatory for us also one other thing is important in this case let's save this for autopilot these are the some of the requirements like under properties of this you need to you know, mention here so this is the tenant properties the name so in this case this is a layer and lab domain so this should be mentioned uh, not the same thing but uh, whatever is applicable in your tenant name that needs to be properly mentioned here okay so this also one of the mandatory thing for the autopilot so let's configure the minimum things for the autopilot at this point of time i'll just go to the devices and windows enrollment and within this you have an option for autopilot uh, configuration so these are the autopilot section so this is where you're going to work on it so in our case we might have to work with the intune connector in case if you are using the hybrid so in my case uh, i need to get this information but in our case we will be you know, just using the uh, hybrid uh, not the hybrid just the um, cloud only so we'll just use windows pc deployment and this is user that's it and uh, i'm not going to convert everything it's a user driven uh, i'm not going to join the hybrid at this point of time and uh, hide change account options is going to be admin white glue is no regional all of these settings and if you want to apply any kind of you know template for the, your computers you could otherwise it's going to be uh, company uh, non-standard so it's going to be on its own either you could give your serial numbers or something else to automatically deploy so in my case i'm actually using the serial number of the device and this is going to apply for all devices so any device uh, if they want to join it let them you know we encourage to join uh, for a corporate network with the azure ad credentials so that's what we have configured so that's all about the configuration with the autopilot so i'm not going to configure here pre-provisioning and self-deployment pre-provisioning is nothing but the windows hello white glow or windows white glow so if you just choose that checkbox to uh, with this respected to change let me show you that in case if you're trying to do if i put this option white glow as yes that would automatically convert this specific con conversation this is the one also and self-deployment is for kiosk devices anyway very rare and manufacturing devices will be manufacturing companies would be using that or self-signing uh, kind of you know inventory management devices and for internet connector is definitely needed in case if you are using the hybrid ad joining method and uh, yeah that connector is needed we would you know work on it with a re um, investigation on that so here um, hybrid option we need to you know pull hybrid option settings this is very important setting so if it is needed then we would collect that information also from them okay and uh, i think you know, pretty much we have covered on uh, windows part so i think it's a good time for us to demonstrate with current settings uh, what do you think i think we should start doing the deployment uh, on a windows device and test all these settings whether they are getting applied or not